How on earth is Lamborghini going to survive when we are all driving electric cars? After all, most of Lambo's current cars are a bit old fashioned. In fact, it's one of the last brands still using a naturally aspirated V12. But Lamborghini has confirmed that it's going to release a load of new cars over the next few years, including some hybrids and a brand new electric car. And in this video, I'm going to tell you all you need to know about it and show you some exclusive images of what this electric Lamborghini could look like. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you are watching Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Some brands have always been associated with a particular kind of engine, like Porsche with its famous flat six. But the more exotic a brand is, the more exotic its engines tend to be. Like Bugatti with its mental quad turbo eight litre W16 engine. But what about Lamborghini? Well, Lambo's signature powerhouse is a naturally aspirated V12. It's been fitting these to loads of cars since the 60s, like the Miura, the Countach, and even the LM002 Off-Roader. There are loads of reasons why you might love V12 engines, but my favorite is the sound they make. Just listen to the naturally aspirated V12s in this Ferrari 812 Superfast and Lamborghini Aventador SVJ. <laughs> They're gorgeous. But there is a downside to V12s. They aren't great for the environment. Shocking, I know. That SVJ you just heard emits 448 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometer. I know it seems daft to be talking about the emissions of a Lamborghini Aventador, but hear me out. 448 grams per kilometer of carbon dioxide is almost 170 grams more per kilometer than a Porsche 911 Turbo S emits. And that 911 is actually quicker to 60 miles an hour and over the sunny quarter mile than an SVJ. Oh dear. So how is Lamborghini gonna fix this? Well, it could bolt a couple of turbos to its V12, a bit like what Aston Martin did with the DBS Superleggera. That car's 5.2 litre V12 makes 725 horsepower, which is plenty, but it only emits 306 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometre, which is 142 grams less than the SVJ. But how do turbos help with the environment? Surely they're only there to boost power, right? Well, yeah and no. Turbos use the energy of pressurized exhaust gases to spin a turbine that squeezes compressed air into the engine to help make more power. So they actually recycle some of the wasted energy, which can help make an engine more efficient. Lamborghini probably isn't gonna do this anyway, not first. Instead, it's going to make some hybrids. This isn't too surprising. Lamborghini has already had a go at building a few hybrids before. The first one was called the Asturian. It had a 610 horsepower 5.2 litre V10 engine pinched from the Huracan, but it also had three electric motors. These boosted power to an insane 910 horsepower. So how come you've never heard of it? Well, the Asterion never actually went into production. Lamborghini cancelled the project, partly so it could focus on developing the Urus SUV. This means the first hybrid Lamborghini production car is actually the Scion FKP37. Let's catch your name. Now this is based on the ordinary Aventador SVJ, but it has an electric motor mounted in the gearbox. Okay, so this motor only makes 35 horsepower, but when you add that to the V12 784 horsepower, you get a total of 818 horsepower. Now this setup is perfect for giving the engine a boost when you accelerate, but it can't power the car by itself. And this means the Science hybrid system doesn't really have a big impact on the car's emissions. But Lamborghini has a plan it's confirmed that it's going to launch a whole load of new hybrid models before 2024. So that's just like three years away. It's already been spotted testing a camouflage Urus prototype. So there's a chance that one of these hybrids could be a facelifted version of that SUV. The current Urus uses a twin turbo four litre V8 with 650 horsepower. It's basically the same engine you get in a Porsche Cayenne or an Audi RS Q8, but with a bit more Lamborghini power. In fact, you can see how these cars measure up because I've actually drag raced all three of them against the Bentley Bentayga. Now, there's a link up there, popping out, should be able to see it. Click that to watch that drag race. If you can't see that link, there is a link below the video in the description. Watch it there instead. Anyway, 
Because the Urus shares so many of its bits with these other cars, Lamborghini could build a hybrid Urus using the motor and batteries from a Porsche Cayenne Turbo SE Hybrid. The Porsche uses a 4-litre twin-turbo V8, which is the same one as in the Urus, and it also gets a 136-horsepower electric motor. And combined, the system can produce a maximum output of 680 horsepower and it's capable of 0 to 60 in 3.8 seconds. So if Lamborghini takes its 650 Aurus tuned 4 litre twin turbo V8, bolts in Porsche's 136 horsepower motor, it could make more than 780 horsepower. Now that would make it much faster than the current Aurus, but it should also make it greener as well. You could pot around town using the electric motor alone and save the petrol engine for fast motorway cruising where it's much more efficient. Lamborghini hasn't yet confirmed which hybrids it's going to build, but there is a chance two could be replacements for the Huracan and the Aventador supercars. After all, the Huracan has been around since 2014 and the Aventador came out in 2011. But that's not the biggest news because Lamborghini has also confirmed it'll build its first all-electric car before 2030. I don't think this will be a supercar like an Aventador or an SUV like the Urus. I actually reckon Lamborghini's first electric car could be a four-door coupe. And this is what it could look like. It'll have all the crazy angles and edges you'd expect from a Lamborghini, but it won't need a gaping front grille like on the Urus. After all, it won't have some twin turbo V8 or a natural aspirated V12 that needs cooling like today's Lambos. You might be thinking, didn't Lamborghini make a front engine coupe like this already? Well, it did, nearly. It revealed a four-door coupe in 2008 called the Astoc, but it never went into production, partly because there was an economic recession that year and Lamborghini didn't have the cash to develop the car. But that shouldn't be a problem for this new car because Lamborghini will be able to borrow plenty of bits from other brands to build its first electric car. I reckon it could use the same platform as the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron GT. After all, all these companies are part of the Volkswagen Group. But knowing Lamborghini, its first EV will have to have more power than those other cars. Just like how the Urus is more powerful than the standard KN Turbo or the RS Q8. So this means the new EV Lamborghini will probably make more than 760 horsepower, which is how much power you get in a Taycan Turbo S in boost mode. This version of the Taycan does not 16 2.8 seconds. Well, that's what Porsche claims. It's actually quicker than that. In fact, I raced a Taycan Turbo S against the old Tesla Model S Performance, and both cars were so evenly matched. I'm not going to tell you which car won. If you want to find out, there's a link popping out up there. Yeah, you know what you got to do. You got to click on that if you want to watch it or follow the link below the video. If you don't, I'll continue. You see, you can sort of imagine what Lamborghini might be able to do with another few years of development with that Taycan platform and motor system. You could be looking at a car that will do 0 to 60 in close to two seconds flat. They might be able to improve the range too. The Taycan Turbo S has around 250 miles of range, which isn't amazing by the latest EV standards, but the rate at which batteries are improving means that Lambo's first ever EV could have more than 300 miles of range when it goes on sale. But what do you think? Should Lamborghini go down the hybrid route before building an electric car, or should it just go all out and make an EV hypercar like the Rimac Nevera? Let me know in the comments below. Now, before I go, I just want to tell you about a new service we're offering through CarWow. So as well as helping you buy a new car, we can help you sell your old car. All you have to do is upload a few photos of your car, fill in the details, and you'll get offers back on your car from our trusted dealers, and you can choose the price you think is best. You will get a good deal through our guys. And if you want to check it out for yourself, click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow. Alternatively, just Google Help Me CarWow and you can do it that way at a later date if you want to. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, let me know if any other videos you'd like me to do in the comments below. If you click there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can actually sign up to the CarWow newsletter where we'll keep you up to date of all the latest news and reviews from the car world in between these video uploads. So just click on that, sign up, it's completely free. And of course, you can cancel anytime you want to. Thanks for watching, see you next time.